Welcome back to my shop. My name is Guy. Today I want to talk to you about doing a long beveled mitered corner. Kind of like what you see here on this mid-century modern piece. I've got four corners that are mitered and I've got a perfect square. Now to get these edges perfect is really a trick and your setup has to be flawless. Now, I know a lot of people that would do this on the table saw. You would tilt your blade. You'd use one of these cubes, let's say, to get your blade at a perfect 45. I find that really inaccurate. These things are not as accurate as people think they are. Myself, I like to use a router table with a big chamfer bit like this. Let me show you how that works. To be able to cut a long bevel edge on three quarter inch stock, you're going to need a special chamfering bit. Now this is a pretty standard chamfering bit. This actually has a 7 16 inch cutting depth. I would only cut about 3 8 of an inch material on this. Now this particular one here is much larger as you can see and it has a 13 16 of an inch cutting depth and I can easily do 3 quarter of an inch material on that one. These are the boards I'm going to use for the demonstration. I'm going to cut a long bevel along this edge so when I match these two up I've got a grain flow going across but these edges have to be perfect so that seam disappears. When I do a demonstration going across the grain these ha edges here have to be perfectly perpendicular. This is really super important for this to work properly. Well, I've got the larger bit set up in my router table and I've got it raised up so it's not going to cut a full depth of cut. Actually I know it's going to be about a sixteenth of an inch light at this point. But as far as how far back this is set in relation to the fence, I've got the ball bearing just behind the fence itself. I want to make sure that the material is riding up against the fence and not up against the bearing. So to, to make adjustments on this to get the fit just perfect, I'm going to be raising the bit up to get to that point. Another very important accessory to use at your router table while you're doing this are feather boards not only going against the fence but also going down. I want to make sure that the material is always riding very firmly against the reference face. In this case my router plate. So I want to be using these which are kind of cool because now they apply pressure down but they also apply pressure towards the fence and I'm going to get these set up so they do this operation for me. So with this all set up I'm ready to go ahead and make the first cut on my piece. So just as I expected, I'm left with a little bit of a flat spot right here. And that's about a sixteenth of an inch where I figured it would be. So I'm going to raise the bit up a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and make another cut. And I'm going to keep doing that until I get this edge here completely 45 all the way to a fine point here. Well, after about four or five passes, that's what I'm looking for right there. I was raising up maybe a thousandths or a couple thousandths at a time, and I finally got to that point. It's very important that you don't go past that edge because the piece could dip when you get to the other side of the fence. But I've got a nice sharp edge all the way along here. I'm just going to go ahead and run the other board. Now with just a little blue tape holding this together, you can see how nice that seam is. And this is at a perfect 90 degrees. I'm going to do the cross grain on this piece. And the setup is the exact same thing. I'm not going to change anything because I know the thickness of my wood is right to the height of that bit. So, but I do want to make sure that I back this piece up. Number one, it's going to be a little tippy and be difficult to, to get through there like that. So I'm going to use this piece of MDF, which is pretty darn close to the same thickness as this. I'm going to use this as a backer to help me push this through. 